the department of truth issue number 19 can we just take a minute to appreciate that this book is still going it i guess it's like vertigo in that sense i know tynan was like i want to write something vertigo ish because this feels like a story that should be over by now i wonder how many more he's got in the bank because it could go forever but also like can this sustain forever very complex and fascinating i i don't hate it this issue it does feel like we're finally getting back to the plot which is very important because the last little bit has been a mixed bag of just what are we doing where are we going how is this happening i'm kind of glad we're pushing the story forward now so we open up this issue we see lee's in a big theater he calls cole down to sue him and they're watching this big tape this big film reel of the faked moon landing on screen and cole's like i already saw this like this is the first thing that got me into this world which in real time was like 19 months ago now. And you're like, whoa, we've been doing this book for 19 months? Holy shit, that's crazy. But also, Lee's just like, I, I need to be honest, kid. I need to know I can trust you. I know you don't trust me, but I gotta trust you because I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like I'm losing it a little bit. I think I'm in too deep with Hawk defecting and everything else that's been happening. I, I feel like... I'm slowly losing myself, and I need to make sure that's not going to happen, and I think you're the only person who can help me from doing that, so can you just, like, help me, please? He's like, well, what does any of this have to do? We see that this entire issue is dedicated to the man of a movie camera. And we open up the next part, we see Cole in bed of his husband. His husband is trying just to get him back to feeling like, you know, we could go on a trip somewhere, just like, take some time to relax, I could talk about it at work. It's like, you should do that. Let's see what we can do. But then we see that Cole is talking to the star-faced man. It, it looks like he created an amalgamation of this character in his own mind to talk to about his problems. And he's like, I just want to tell my husband everything. I just want to tell him, like, I'm working for Lee Harvey Oswald and I killed two of his friends who he worked at the Post with. And I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing anymore and I'm just messed up and... You just see the star-faced man is like, well, we could just chop him up and eat him. He's like, I'd rather chop myself up first. He's like, oh, we, yeah, that could be arranged. <laughs> but Ruby shows up. Her and Cole are on assignment. They are headed somewhere. Just going somewhere in a remote plane headed to the other part of the world. It's Fort Knox we'll get to. But Cole is on the phone of his husband. And he's like, I'm going to be gone for a couple days. Work's taking me this thing. Husband's asking if he's going to relax. Of course he's not. He just wants Cole to be happy. You're getting the sense that Maddie is feeling himself distancing from Cole. Like, is this relationship going to sustain? We see that they're headed to Fort Knox because at Fort Knox, that is where the Russian man from the last issue had been for a week before he died at the at the footsteps of Lee and Cole. We saw in the last issue, there's like the previous storyline where a Russian defectee was going to come work for America, but he went over to save his people and then him and Lee were going to be like the opposing forces working for their organizations. He's now dead. It's a message directed to the organization. Things are not going well. And then that's pretty much all we see of Cole and Ruby in this book. Because the next little bit here is dedicated to Maddie. He's out with a friend and his friend's just like, dude, you're a coward. You should leave him. He obviously doesn't love you. The sex isn't good anymore. He's not giving you the support you need. You need to find somebody else who's willing to help you. But Maddie's not having any of it. He's just like, I will deal with it when it when it happens okay he's still my husband i still love him he goes up to the bar to get a drink and there he's accosted by this man well-dressed man we have a close-up of this guy's face and it's smiling and it makes me go we, we've talked about the smiling man a lot already in this book i wonder if this is him but we don't see him smiling that often but he's just like hey how are you doing and he's like i'm already married dude but thanks for everything he's like yeah you're married to cole turner right he's like how do you know that i know you're married to cole turner uh, my friend has something that you're gonna want to see and then you see maddie heads back over to his friend that he's at the bar he's like look i'm gonna go talk to this guy but if i drop off the face of the earth i need you to describe that face to cole he's like oh okay he's like i'm being serious he's like okay well okay let's go then and we see maddie follows this guy and they're headed down so throughout the bar he just talks like you know i know the organization your husband works for he's doing a lot of weird stuff but it's not a lot of it's that interesting i should say you know you know i got a couple guys here who might have some stuff that could interest you and in what your husband's doing and we see a hand in a plaid shirt place a camera on top of a table 
He's like, well, what's on the camera? And then we see it's good old Hawk Harrison, his American cap. He's like, this is your husband killing two reporters from the Washington Post. Want to take a look? And that's where the issue ends. And again, this is probably the most simple issue has been because it's not setting up any big storyline about like American revisionist history or anything. It's just like a sad husband trying to get his husband back and it's not working. And there's something special about that. It's kind of cool just to have that storyline, have that feel go through everything. I did dig that. Again, the artwork is beautiful. The lettering is beautiful. Everything about this book looks beautiful. I hope some people still decide to pick this up. I feel like it's slowly losing its own momentum where it's like, is it being sustained? Is anybody still interested? But it's still kind of fun because I think Maddie's going to defect to the Ministry of Lives of Hawk and the Smiling Man, and then we'll have to see what happens with that. But kind of fun just seeing the world falling apart. There's something to enjoy about that, and I am very much enjoying it. So, the Department of Truth, issue number 19. I am going to give a 7 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.